it's never an easy journey on the road to the final four. And what had been a pleasant trip for these two old rivals, North Carolina and Wake Forest, has suddenly become turbulent. This is game two in the first meeting this year. It took three overtimes to decide a winner. The rematch next on CBS. Welcome you to NCAA College Basketball on the road to the Final Four this afternoon. Our stop takes place in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. ACC encounter, North Carolina against Wake Forest. Good afternoon, everybody. Bern Lundquist along with Billy right. Backer. Glad you're with us. Let's talk a little bit, Billy, about Justin Gray and what he's given Wake Forest on the perimeter. Well, they have a three-headed monster out on the perimeter, and Justin Gray certainly one of those. He showed last year coming off a broken jaw that he is totally fearless when he goes inside. He's a great jump shooter. Wake Forest has as fine a perimeter game as there is in college basketball. Rashad McCants has been scoring prodigiously for Carolina. How are they getting him open? Well, they call it the Carolina curl, and here's what happens. May goes inside, and with that wide body set screens, McCants times it perfectly, rubs off the screen, Defender can't stay with him, and then he goes up and squares for the jump shot. A tough man to stop. 7.25 point games this year, Vern. Florida State has played and defeated both Wake Forest and North Carolina. Here's Coach Leonard Hamilton. Meaning we played both North Carolina and Wake Forest, we feel that these teams are mirroring each other in so many ways. They both have two high-octane point guards that love to push the ball. They have great shooters on, on, on the wings. They have big guys who get up and down the floor. And this is a fan's game, and I'm going to enjoy watching it. We hope all of you will as well. The tip is coming next. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Mitsubishi Motors, makers of the all-new 04 Gallant. Wake up and drive. Smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. And by Old Spice, spice things up. Welcome back to Winston-Salem. On your left, the starting five for North Carolina. Sean May, Jawad Williams, McCann, Scott, and Felton. On your right, Eric Williams, Jamal Levy, Teron Downey, Chris Paul, the outstanding freshman, and Justin Gray. Roy Williams in his first season back at his alma mater as head coach. The team now 13 and 6 for the season. Lost a heartbreaker in overtime the other night. And Skip Prosser, who is in his third season as the head coach at Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons had a 16-point halftime lead and dropped their most recent encounter at North Carolina State. This is Roy's first time in this arena to play Wake Forest, but he was here for the NCAA tournament with his Kansas team only to lose to Duke in a very gallant effort a few years ago. Mike Wood, Reggie Cofer, James Lucky, the officiating trio, and North Carolina controls the tip. Raymond Felton attempts the entry pass, kicked by Chris Paul, and a fresh 35. You have Paul against Felton, two of the best point guards in the United States, head-to-head. -head. These guys are real, as Leonard Hamilton said, sit back and watch two of the top point guards go right after each other. There's the inside pass to Jawad Williams. He gets the shooter's roll, and North Carolina up by two. And easy. <laughs> nice backdoor cut. Good hands by Williams. That one's knocked out of bounds. And it'll be Wake Forest ball. 119 to 114 in three overtimes. The first meeting between these two. That one uh, unusually for an ACC encounter took place all the way back in December. And Wake Forest won it. North Carolina now has lost five straight overtime games. Three this year. It shows the slight difference between where they could be ranked and where they are. And the most recent, of course, was Thursday night to Duke at home. There's the jumper off the mark by Justin Gray. May with a rebound at 21 against Duke the other night at home. He would tie his uh, record in that arena. 21 rebounds in a ball game like that is sensational. Second time he had 21. He had 21 against Akron earlier this year. Here's Scott with the jumper. Got it. That's just inside the arc. Bad play by Eric Williams on that one. He didn't show well enough. Gave Scott an easy opportunity with Downey going behind to get off the jump shot. Now Felton, man to man on Paul. This is Levy. And Justin Gray. Tough shot. 
an even tougher pass. And there's Scott made and knocked it backwards. Loose ball picked up by Teron Downey. And uh, Eric Williams, I don't think, was ready for the pass. And there was nothing there. The Wake Forest guards going inside with Carolina collapsing very well. So poorly devised play so far by the perimeter team. Well, if uh, form holds, this one ought to be played in the 80s. North Carolina, the third highest scoring team in the country. And Wake Forest now number five. Troy State, Arizona, ranked one and two. I don't see a level of intensity on the part of Wake Forest. And here's another turnover, Vern, to start this ball game. They kind of, they're playing very relaxed. And in a game like this, you've got to come out, particularly on your home floor, with much more intensity than they're showing so far. Well, a small thing that may be not such a small thing is they were lining up for the, uh, for the tip. You noticed that Eric Williams is waving to his parents yeah. in the stand. Yeah, not good focus at all. Now here's uh, Scott, guarded by Downey. 4 nothing. North Carolina lead. Nice pass. Again, Bad hands. Wake Forest allowing Scott to go over the top without a hedge or a switch. Scott should be aware of that and pick up some jump shots here early in the ballgame. The crowd completely out of it because of the way the locks of days of the play of the Deacons so far in this ballgame. Now they're on their uh, second right side is Downey to Levy. Screen set by Gray. Chris Paul picked up by Felton. There's the jumper from Downey off the front iron. Rebound to Rod Williams, North Carolina. For these two teams, as Coach Hamilton said, do really match up. Size-wise, personnel, what they like to do, how they like to play. Nice defense by Levy. That was Jamal Levy with the block. Here comes Wake Forest, still looking for their first points of the game. Justin Gray into the uh, left side. There's Levy. Back good. outside the pole. Good kick out. Extra pass made for the open shot. Well executed by Wake Forest. Gray is the leading three-point shooter for the Demons. He's at 52 now for the year, averaging just at 38%. North Carolina to recognize how they're being played on the solid screen out top. They're going to be able to get a lot of easy jump shots with wide open looks by just taking it over the top of the screen. There's another example. Melvin Scott for three. Wake Forest not fighting over the top of those solid screens. Gives you a lot of open looks. Well, we played just over three minutes. at the 7-3 North Carolina lead. Roy Williams getting ready to go to his bench for the first time. Wake Forest wanting to go inside to Williams. He had a great game against North Carolina in the triple overtime. Got May in foul trouble, and that probably was the difference in the third overtime. A little battle. Here's May from outside. Not nope. what you want if you're North Carolina. Uh, Wake Forest will try and run. There's Downey. Leaves it for Gray. Gets to the turn pass and turns the jumper from the base. May is 0 for 2 prior to that shot from three-point range this year for North Carolina. So you don't want in a game like this for him taking shots that are not his game. Here's Felton. Block. Williams at the block. Javon Williams is there. Three Back seconds. outside. Scott! Vigils yep. missed that one. as a three-second call. Good anticipation by Felton. Williams was in the lane the whole time. Now was Scott. almost. Vern, that was almost a, a, a replica of a ACC play. Derek Wittenberg to Lorenzo Charles. You know, a shot that was well intended. Everybody turned their head a little bit. People can remember in '83 when Charles put that in to beat Houston for the national championship. And Jim Valvano ran on the court, and looked for somebody to hug. 10-5. North Carolina, two or three from out, outside, and Wake Forest has hit one. Good overplaying by North Carolina so far in this game. They're making it tough. They collapse on Williams. He kicks it back outside. The three rebound into the hand of Rashad McKinney. Both teams want to push the ball up the floor. Scott has hit three already. There's a turnaround. Noel, who had a very good ball game against the Wake Forest last year, is a guy that can come off the bench and give valuable minutes. Even though that North Carolina lost to Duke the other night, their bench provided them with a big lift. And David Noel picks up the foul. 15 minutes and 20 seconds to go. First half of play. North Carolina with the edge thus far. Back on December 20th with 103 left in the third overtime. Melvin Scott tied the game at 114 with that field goal. But Eric Williams scored the go-ahead basket to seal the win for the Demon Deacons, 119-114.
in three overtime. And I think that guy was there. <laughs> well, he was there in 1957, leading the band, I believe, when Wake Forest played North Carolina four times. Total of 16 <laughs> points separated those teams. Wake losing every one, North Carolina going undefeated and winning the way all the way to the national championship. And he was the band director. <laughs> You can believe most of the basketball part of that. But yeah. None of the band directors. All right. Levy with a nice play inside. Off the glass, around the rim, and through. It's 12-7. North Carolina now three of eight in the field. Uh, rather, Wake Forest is, and there's a deep foul on Levy. That's the first time Wake Forest has stepped out on that solid screen. Levy picks up the foul. Really a mismatch there with Felton's quickness coming around the curve. Well, Melvin Scott off to a quick start in this one, Billy. Well, he's off to a start because he's getting open looks as to the way Wake Forest has decided to play the solid screen out top. Scott uh, has not had big games against Wake Forest, but certainly capable. And had an ineffective uh, encounter against Duke Thursday. Only one of five in the field in that game. Trent Strickland is in for uh, Wake Forest now. Traveling. And there's what Levy can do. He's uh, listed at about 6'9", but he plays a lot bigger than that. He's got the long arms, he's got the wingspan, he almost plays it like a seven-footer. Doesn't have a lot of weight to him, but uh, plays much bigger than listed. Well, Providence uh, leading Syracuse at this point. You saw an early score on uh, Kentucky and South Carolina, big game in the SEC. Well, he is Dave Odom coaching South Carolina to a lead in the SEC East, the former coach here at Wake Forest. Kyle Visser, outstanding freshman, is on the floor now. He's got the pass. Nice. There we go. Beautiful drop step move that we saw him work on yesterday in practice. In my estimation, he may be the steal of the recruiting season. Of all the freshmen that were heralded, this guy didn't come in with a great deal of credit. But I think he's going to be one of the top big men in college basketball if he keeps it up. You see him getting good position. He's got the size. He's got the body makeup. He has the skill level. Dexterity with both, both hands. And to imagine... Nobody talked about him when you start talking about the recruits that were coming into this league, but he's going to be a good one. Well, he's from Grand Rapids, Michigan. We chatted with Tommy Amateur, the Michigan coach, last week and said, how did he get away? Well, there was so much attention paid to his good friend, Drew Namath, who ultimately signed out of Muskegon with Michigan State, that uh, he kind of slipped through the cracks, if that's uh, at all possible. North Carolina in the zone for the first time, a little 1-3-1. Wake Forest can surround. That was some real good shooters. Three on the shot clock. Double pop. There's Fisher. Put it up. Got it. I said that young man is going to be a player. How about that touch? He's playing the hack behind May. Can afford to pick up some fouls. So not a bad move here by Skip Crosser. Six unanswered now for Wake Forest. That ball was off the foot. That, a good call by the official. Call right there in Felton's face, but the ball did hit his foot. Here we see Visser. Look at that extension and nice touch. Freshman who uh, I think has great promise. Was six for eight, 13 points, eight rebounds in that first encounter that took overtime win for the Deacons. That was Chris Paul who went for the steal, but he got it. 13 on the shot clock. There's the screen set by May. Set foul on Visser. Second time today, Wake Forest big man has tried to step out on that play and picked up the chief foul. They've got to square up at the guard coming their way. And you see <laughs> Skip Prosser trying to tell the official what the technique is, but his guys aren't doing it. Skip <laughs> executed it perfectly. The problem is he in suit. There's Felton, guarded by Paul. Scott May can't, uh, John May rather, I'm going back in time. Here's McCann. He has been really on the mark of late. Missed that one. At 27 again in the overtime loss Thursday night. He's so efficient on the offensive end of the floor. Does not occupy the ball a lot, but really executes when he does get it. May goes up strong, got the rebound and the free throw. Now that's the one thing that Fisher does not have is the power on the inside, but that'll come. Now North Carolina trying to win on the road, something in which they have not excelled in the last couple of years, but it's uh, it's really tough to win on the road in this league. Duke 5-0, everybody else at 500 to below. 
Well, all the great things that are said about Dean Smith, and rightfully so, is the winningest coach in the history of uh, college basketball, is a guy that won more than 70% of his games on the road in this league. Wow. Is that strong or not? Well, there's a three-point play for Sean May. This North Carolina team is uh, fighting a bit of recent history. They uh, have lost 19 of their last 21 road games on that. It's going to be a foul on the camp. No, out front. Dana Luce in the ball game right now. This young man suffering from an ankle injury, which really has taken away a season that a lot was predicted of him. He was picked first team. Now, you can imagine this Lake Forest team started the year 11-0. They're still in the top 20. But the guy that was supposed to be their top player, preseason first team All-ACC, has been totally ineffective. If he gets back anywhere near his normal form, it would really help this club. Another hold. Manuel holding Strickland. Manuel had the great game the other night defensively against Greenwich and really uh, brought North Carolina back into it. Well, Jack Manuel picks up his second foul. That almost can be considered intentional. Mm -hmm. The grabbing of the shirt. Strickland, number 33. There's Eric Williams and uh, Chris Paul, number three. Now North Carolina heavily playing on all passes. Wake Forest is going to have an opportunity to get some backdoor cuts. The way North Carolina is overplaying defensively. Baseline drive. Danilus. Nope. Tip. No. Danilus. Working hard. Great hands by May. Take away. Here comes North Carolina. Force it up. There's Ooh, Ray. thought about it, didn't uh, he? <laughs> I thought he was looking at 0 for 4 for the yeah. three. <laughs> Williams looks inside where uh, May is being fronted for the moment. Now he's got it. Good job of busting. Oh, uh, what, what a shot. shot, huh? Brilliant half hook. Oh, crossover dribble, excellence there. Chris Paul with the answer at the other end. Paul is some freshman. We really, we don't even call kids freshmen anymore. You know, it's just a matter of the class they're going to school in. But he is capable of playing on any level in terms of uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. He, on the arm, Mc, Mc, McCants got hit, no question about it, and he's complaining, and rightfully so. No call. Here's that last basket by Sean May. Time called 11-11 to go, first half. Look at this week's ratings percentage index, which finds Duke at the top of the list, and St. Joe's number two. Bert, I've got to say something about St. Joe's. I watched them play in that entire game against Villanova the other night. They're very well coached, fun to watch, a backcourt that any coach in America would love to have, not only this year, but any year. They're terrific. But what I'm going to point out something here. North Carolina, which is probably on the verge right now if they don't get something moving, not even making the tournament. St. Joe's probably going to be a number one seed. North Carolina in six days will play three teams tougher than St. Joe's will play the whole year. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something kind of wacky about that RPI as far as that goes. I and mean, you're talking about this North Carolina team in, in six days will play number one Duke right. on the road here against Wake Forest. It's number 14. Then on the road at Georgia Tech, uh, which is number 16, play those people in six days, two on the road. So taking nothing away at all from St. Joe's, you have to beat who you play against, and they're undefeated. You can't do any better than that. But it seems like the RPI is a little bit out of whack. You know, the RPI used as supplemental data when the, the, the selection is made on Selection Sunday for the tournament. Good. Here's a steal. Noel, two on one. Good anticipation. Felton, by Noel. oh, Downey is uh, in the lane, but uh, Felton does get the ball. Very nice defensive play by Noel. He laid back a little bit, not in the complete overplay. North Carolina found Lake Forest asleep at the start of this game. They're playing extremely well. Back up by six is seven to two, North Carolina run. And back in the zone. They're showing a little zone, and then a big overplay man-to-man -man defense. This is Strickland, number 33, on the floor with Downey, Danilus, Eric Williams, and Dustin Gray. Chris Paul getting the rest. Of course, going to try to go cross-court against this zone. And in the lane, that was Noel with a fine defensive guy. And Skip Prosser recognizes the same thing that we do, Vern. His team is not focused at all, and he gets a timeout before North Carolina can even get possession of the ball. So timeout call by Wake Forest after this fine defensive effort by North Carolina. Now let's take a look at our Applebee's neighborhood favorites. And Billy, I want you to pay a special attention to this one. Billy Packer was a three-year starter with the Wake Forest team and Deacons from 1960 to 62.
He averaged nearly 15 points, shot 82% from the free throw line. And Billy was a two-time All-ACC selection, helped Wake Forest to three ACC titles, and a spot in the 1962 Final Four, where they lost in the semis to Ohio State. Team, it was a little bit too good for us, okay? Played with some fine players there during that period of time, particularly Len Chappell, who has uh, had his number retired here. One of the great players that uh, has ever played in this league, as a matter of fact. Now, speaking of numbers, number 34 might appear here, and Billy wore that great distinction back uh, in the early 60s for Bones McKinnon. As a matter of fact, this Wake Forest team was trying to defeat North Carolina for the sixth consecutive time is McCants and if they do they would equal the string of six in a row that you and your team started in 61-62. Bones McKinney had the best winning record of any coach that have ever ever coached against Dean Smith that coached three or more. He was eight and two against Dean Smith and Wake Forest again just not in focus at all. See what McCants should have thrown that ball in a pass it would have been easy for Felton to lay it in. Now well, Scott tries for three and cans it. Kentucky trailing South Carolina early that uh, and uh, Providence Syracuse continue to got now four for four getting some really good looks and they go back into the zone packing things in Wake Forest hasn't solved it yet Michigan needed to do as you saw in that very tight big ten there's a three that one is good Quicklin the player who had the five for nine against North Carolina in the triple overtime game and there we see Felton doing the same thing to Wake that we just saw Paul do to North Carolina. Coast to coast. Strickland off the iron. Not a good shot. Good blocking out by North Carolina. Well, one of the highlights of the golf season, even though it is early. The AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am on CBS. Third round coverage coming when we're concluded here. Luke Donald uh, with a one-stroke lead over Tom Pernice through two rounds. I Live was, coverage of Pebble Beach. I was tipped that a pretty fair former Wake Forest student golfer is going to be honored here at halftime. Curtis Strange, who was an All-American who led the Wake Forest to a national championship. That shot good and a free throw. Well, another Wake Forest golfer will have a part of our coverage this afternoon, Lanny Watkins. And I'll bet you, knowing how much he loves his basketball, they might be in rehearsal out there, but he's sneaking a peek at this school. And you know, another Wake Forest guy that wasn't a bad golfer, had a big uh, skins game uh, series here just a week ago, Arnold Palmer. How about that? Maybe Came the in greatest second. Wake Forest right. golfer. Yeah, I said a fair Wake Forest <laughs> golfer. Arnold uh, started everything as we know it here at this university in terms of the golf tradition. McCant sits down. North Carolina playing very efficient basketball here in the first half. And they have hit 12 of 18 from the field and are up by 13. And he can't get it go. I love the way May uses that body to shield people off. And Williams is a big body as well, but May taking care of them. And on the arm is Paul. Felton with the jumper. We saw McCant shoot a jumper that he was fouled on and not called. That time the official all over that one. North Carolina totally dominating this first half. Raymond Felton goes to the line. Now, one of the things that's been unusual about both of these teams, Fern, is the different halves that they've had a tendency to play. North Carolina found themselves in a situation where they had a huge lead in the game this year, and then you just have it turned around on them, and Wake Forest just the other night at North Carolina State had a 16-point lead, built an 18-point lead, 16 at halftime, came out the second half and just didn't get it going, and was beaten by State. Well, here's North Carolina at Wake Forest, and up by 15. That one no good. Levy chases it down. The good defense. Look at those bodies in there. Almost four people surrounding Levy. No place to pass to. And what's happening, Vern, are the guards at Wake Forest are not making themselves available for the ball to be kicked out. You notice there was no passing angle whatsoever for Levy. Now Chris Paul will inbound. He does Eric Williams. Under eight to go. Nice. Whoa! Oh, Levy could have had a technical foul yes, on he that hung one. On the rim. A little extra on the rim, no call. Noel. Oh, nice touch. That was May with the touch pass. Back outside here. Scott, he hasn't missed yet. How many of those wide open looks is Scott going to get before somebody says, let's guard number one? 
Melvin Scott is five for five. He's got 14 points. Got the first ever to wear number one at North Carolina, but somebody ought to introduce a uh, Wake Forest player to that number one. Melvin Scott, four threes in the first 12 minutes. He's helped propel the Tar Heels to a 34-18 lead. On the inside like this, the North Carolina packing in extremely well. Nobody from Wake Forest is setting up a passing lane. There's another guard out here. He should be falling into this spot to give Levy an opportunity to make the good pass. But you'll notice, no passing lanes created. He was a guard. Paul was standing almost out at half court. Did not make his presence available. That would have been an easy shot for him had he moved down to the baseline. 34-18. Uh, pay attention to the field goal percentage for North Carolina. It's 68. And all four of those three-point attempts have been canned by Melvin Scott. Now on the floor, Chris Paul, Levy, Visser, Eric Williams, and Justin Gray for Wake Forest. North Carolina has had no problem having good shooting percentage this year. They're averaging right up around 48%. Their problem is stopping the other team from having a percentage. The pass, Williams can't get to it. Wake Forest still has not solved either the man-to-man -man of North Carolina or the zone. Rashad McCants and uh, Jawad Williams back on the floor now for Roy Williams in North Carolina. And here's a situation where Roy Williams able to go to that bench somewhat. As I said the other night against Duke, their bench almost doubled the production in both minutes and points. Actually, more than doubled the points and minutes that Duke got from their bench. And everybody says what the North Carolina doesn't have the defense. McCants, guarded by Justin Gray, out to Jackie Manuel. And this North Carolina performance has taken the crowd completely out of this game. Yes. Very quiet in here. Very much unlike uh, any game that you'll see play between these two teams. That jumper not there. Eric Williams for the Deacons. Now Justin Gray. Looks inside the Visser. There's the uh, pass underneath. Nice. And Levy will go to the line. Nice hand by Levy. Visser made that work too by setting up a good pass. Check out CBS Sports Line's projections of the 65 schools that could make up this year's NCAA tournament. Just click on NCAA Hoops at cbssportsline.com. NCAA basketball continues tomorrow down in Austin, Oklahoma. We'll visit the Longhorns. Or oh, some of you will see Illinois take on the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. That's tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Levy, three-point play. They, of course, want to go inside, and what they have got to do is to pick up their defensive intensity because it made things very easy for North Carolina so far. That's Visser doing a fine job defensively on the baseline. Now back outside, the other corner. Manuel, not that much of a scoring threat. Out of threat, Williams should have stayed on the ground. That's why he gets in foul trouble. There's Felton, who is in and out. Rebound, Levy. Look at Visser running on the floor for a big man. Three and three. Back outside to Justin Gray. Here's Chris Paul. Williams, they collapse on him. To oh, oh, power. power move by Mr. Williams. Had three defenders circling him. Muscled up for the basket and will shoot a free throw. And the first game this year, he was 11 for 18, 24 points, 8 rebounds, and was really outstanding in those overtimes. And there he just overpowered everybody for North Carolina. Now, if you're Roy Williams, you've got to start getting a little bit nervous right now because Wake Forest starting to get back into the ball game. The team has got to be a little bit drained from the game just one night ago against Duke. 34-23. Now Manuel. Penetration. Off the glass. Visser. Visser again doing the job. Chris Paul. He's quick. Batted down by Jawan Williams. Now well, we talked a little bit about that ratings percentage index, the individual team. How about the uh, breakdown by conference? Look at the ACC on top, Billy. The ACC having a stellar year. The SEC right in there. Mississippi State, as we know, and South Carolina leading the East and, uh, and West respectively there. But you know what's interesting is you figure Duke gets the number one seed. You figure at this point, St. Joe's gets the number one seed. 
you figure at this point Stanford is the number one seed out in the West. Right. Where is the ACC, uh, the, the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big Twelve? I mean, where, where, who gets that other number one spot if things stay as they are? He's very, very interesting. Big East the same way, a pit team that's uh, playing extremely well. Seven nothing run. And a single-digit margin now, Jawan Williams. He's only four for 18 in conference three-pointers. Fisher so, again, a big lift. Fisher and Williams, Wake Forest going with their two bigs for the first time and uh, paying off for it. Ball tries to penetrate. McCants picks him up. Chris Paul, nope. Could have been a huge three there. Nice back-out dribble by Paul. Uh, Melvin Scott back on the floor. I think that Felton would be very important for Williams to get Felton out there. He's sitting over on the side trying to get in. We'll give Manuel that shot. Any time. Here comes Wake Forest again. And the foul. Right now, Wake Forest, for the first time, is showing an intensity, particularly trying to get the transition game going. It's really important for North Carolina to have Felton back out on the floor, and here he comes. Jesse Jackie Gray, I, I said he's a fearless player. Last year he broke his jaw against Duke and then came back and with it all wired up. Weeks later played against Duke and was just an outstanding performer. Probably one of the better guards that most people around the country don't know a lot about. Mm -hmm. And he excels at this. 87% off. <laughs> I'm on a roll. You I know, did that to J.J. Redick a couple weeks well, ago. Well, you know, Kurt, I thought he was leaning, though. That was not quite his normal shot. His back was leaning in a little bit more than it normally does. 87% of uh, the season. Wake Forest in the zone. Felton out on the court should help somewhat because Manuel sat down. You've got Scott with a printer shot, Williams, and Felton. Now, uh, May just outside the three. How about that? Wow, I don't think that's a good decision either. The rebound, McCants, no, the tip, no. Another rebound made, but he loses the ball. And now here's Paul. Wow, can Paul take off down that floor penetrating? Here's Mr. Felton. Repeat. Here's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> They're almost like twins taking the ball down the floor. And a foul on this side, on Levy. One of the things that I thought that Paul did wrong, though, on that last occasion, Vern, he took the ball a little bit too deep. If he's pulled up around the foul line there, he had some cutters for layup. That's uh, Ron Downey getting ready to come back on the floor. 3.41 to go, first half. And here you'll see three North Carolina players, so you know you have an advantage if you're Paul. You want to take this ball in this direction, have Williams come in behind, and Paul took the ball a little bit too far, and therefore there was no passing angle. Three on two, see, Williams could have come right in behind him and had an easy layup. He took the dribble, about two dribbles too far, and didn't give the angle an opportunity to develop. When you've got the numbers, you ought to end up with something easy. Now you see that North Carolina has suddenly gone... Uh Cole from the field missed their last eight and another turnover. Oh, hell ball and possession arrow goes North Carolina's way. Nice job by Felton to go right down on the floor as opposed to Williams who was reaching for the ball. That could have been a Wake Forest opportunity to pick one up. But with this combination of Visser and Williams, Wake Forest has been very effective. They now really have a big team out there. Three bigs, two small. Interesting move here by Skip Prosser. There's McCants. Levy on McCants. Now he'll be a problem for McCants to shoot over with those long arms. That's the pass to Brian Williams. There's Fisher. Now McCants tries to solve it, and Levy, I believe, is going to pick up the foul. Coming up on singular at the half, Gus Johnson and Seth Davis. We'll update you on all of today's scores and highlights here on this Saturday afternoon. A lot of significant games being played around the country, and Gus and Seth will have updates on all of those of import. Felton, the number one assist man in the Atlantic Coast Conference, third in the nation. He's also number three in steals in the conference. The one thing that probably isn't what was expected of him coming out of high school when so much had been written about him as a McDonald's All-American, he and McCants and May all on that team, you thought he was a much a clearer shooter than he's turned out to be. But without question, he can push up the ball, the ball up the floor with anybody. At his high school 
number retired earlier this season in Latta, South Carolina, did Raymond Felton. Gets the two free throws. Now substitutions for Roy Williams. Byron Sanders, a defensive ace, is on the floor for the first time. And Rashawn Terry, number three, is on for the first time as well. The Strickland and blocked by Terry. Winston-Salem product. Outman pass. He and Chris Paul still very good friends. And a foul on Terry. That one could have gone either way, but Terry wanted to get rid of the ball, and it was wise for him maybe to just sit there, hold it, and pivot instead of trying to make a play. Well, winning streaks currently. You know about Stanford and St. Joseph's. And St. Joseph's Stanford with 19 each. Duke has won 16, and Utah State quietly working its way into the picture at West. Duke uh, at 16 because of that loss to Purdue, their only loss of the year. That was in the Great Alaska shootout. Trent Strickland gets the first and shoots one more. Double bonus now for the rest of the half, the final 258 for Wake Forest. Strickland, a uh, big game in the loss to Texas, 22 points and seven rebounds, so he's a very prolific guy coming off of that bench to put up some big numbers. Sanders out in the ball game with Terry right now, and North Carolina hurting a little bit in the ball handling and those two, with those two fellows on the floor. So Felton's got to keep it in his hands. As it now, there's the switch with Visser and a foul on Visser. And that's the second time that Visser has picked up a foul with Felton coming off a solid screen. Very difficult for a man his size to stay with Felton as he comes off. You have to square up and move those feet, and you can see what happens. He never got square with the feet. Felton just too quick. That's his third, so he'll have to sit. And Vitas Danilus is back on the floor now. But I think folks got an idea of the kind of talent that uh, this brings to this club. Really. Without question. Skip Prosser told us yesterday, I, I mentioned this, Skip, as, as you were talking about Tommy Amaker saying, how did he get out of the state of Michigan? And Skip said, hey, I wasn't going to look at him. I'm in a, in a uh, I guess he said the airport. Airport in Grand Rapids. The guy said, well, why are you coming up and not taking a look at this? He said, I've never even heard of the guy. So, <laughs> of course, that was his junior year. And, as I said before, that young man is going to play extremely well in this league. 2.40 to go before the break as uh, Visser sits with his third foul. There's North Carolina in that zone, which they have uh, alternated zone and man-to-man -man throughout this first half. This is Felton out of the point against Chris Paul. He's got Paul Downing out there right now, and so you've got it. There's the zone well surrounded with good shooters. Justin Gray. Gray as well. In the corner, down it. Yes. And here's a case where the zone really didn't match up well with what Wake Forest presently has on the floor. Turn a shove off. No call underneath. Ball on the floor. Got open. Got. He has it's his first miss today. And Paul is fouled. Wow, and he, he really went down hard. Byron Sanders. Uh, this team that, that North Carolina has on the floor right now has got three guys that are not very good ball handlers. It's Sanders, Terry, and Noel. Now, one of the really effective teams thus far this season down in Starkville, Mississippi, Mississippi State. Their center, Lawrence Roberts, who transferred from Baylor, is averaging 16.6 points per game and 10 rebounds. They're 7-1 and one in the SEC. Their only conference loss a buzzer beater by Kentucky back on January 13th, and they are 8 and 0 on the road. That's amazing, isn't it? And that that uh, loss to Kentucky by one point was a kind of a tap in that uh, gave them their only loss in the league. And Chris Paul grew up just outside of Winston Salem, so he stayed close to home. He's one of the two freshmen in the country who made the, the top 30 list as finalist for the John Wooden Award this year. The other is Chris Humphreys at Minnesota. Now Terry goes out, Manuel in, but Manuel doesn't help you a great deal in ball hand with Felton's hand. There he is. Sanders, Sanders, Manuel, and Noel on the floor along with Felton and Scott. Now he realizing Scott's the major threat, so he's staying right on it. Baseline, up and under, blocked by Danilus. It was 16, the margin. Nice recovery by Manuel that time. Who's the foul going to be on? Noel? Yep, yep. Williams a little bit too big for him in there. Roy Williams just trying to steal minutes here. 132 to go. He had a nice working margin, and Wake Forest has come out of their uh, 
Belgium's in their early sleeping habits to start this ball game. And Eric Williams is at the line. Big, strong body is Williams. Now, Roy Williams going back to uh, Sean May and Jawad Williams now. Probably didn't want to have to do that. Uh, save May for the second half, keep him rested and out of any further foul trouble, but Roy can see this lead getting away from him here. Got to show it up a little bit. Williams hits two. The lead is five. Under 90 to go, first half. A 15 to four Wake Forest run. Danilus, Cavill on Jawan Williams. Danilus, the second big defensive play down underneath the basket. And as I said, this guy was picked first team preseason all conference. Hasn't been able to play up to that. And you can see he's nowhere near the condition that he was last year because of those ankle problems. But those are two big plays to wait for. You know, Skip Ross was saying yesterday he was hoping that this might be the comeback game for Danilus. As a missed shot, defended well. Under a minute to go. David Noel looks for May. Williams fronting him. There's Melvin Scott. Well, Downey doing a good job realizing that Scott's had a hot hand. There's a charge. Offense. Third big play by Danilus. And Danilus looks like he got like hurt. He got hit in the face, didn't he? Yes. The last thing he wants to do is to have another injury this year, so he stays out there. Oh, boy, he took a shot. Burn, one of the things about this Wake Forest team, no seniors on this club. Right. I mean, this is a very, very young team. North Carolina, of course, uh, is in the same situation in terms of not playing seniors. So these clubs are not only good this year, they're going to continue to be better. Wake Forest has one walk-on named Alan Williams, who is a senior, doesn't play. And other than that, it's, a, it's an extraordinarily young team. And here's Grant in the ball game for North Carolina. Roy Williams just trying to steal some minutes, some seconds, actually, here to keep people out of foul trouble and rest. Damian Grant, who has missed most of this year with injuries. Ball had a good look. And loose. And loose. Hell ball. Wake Forest. Well, he has been something. Well, Wake Forest had the nation in rebounding last year, of course. Josh Howard was a part of that. Dan Luce, Williams, Levy. And uh, Dan Luce was such an outstanding power rebounder. Getting it done here. Into this hat. Justin Gray wants to clear out. Yep. Takes the jumper. Air ball. Uh, Gray waited too long. He had Sanders on him and felt he could take him, but you can't take that long because then the other team has all four players matching up for you. North Carolina is using one of its timeouts with 20.6 seconds remaining first half. They are 18-1 this season, the perfect 10-0 in the Big West Conference, a 15-game win streak. They're fourth in the nation in field goal percentage at 51%, and fourth in the nation in rebound margin with uh, an average of 8.6 rebound difference. A lot of people under that radar screen, Vern, when you start looking around the country. It's going to make for some NCAA tournament. Yes, indeed, and the championship to be televised again this season on CBS, the final four, April 3rd and 5th in San Antonio. The chance to make, and there we see Wake trying again. They can't handle Felton in that area. What a block! Williams on a block and saved two points right at the half. And Danilus took an old world dive. <laughs> oh boy, did he flop. That was a Lithuanian fall down. Oh, great block by Eric Williams as we end the first half of play quite a comeback by wake forest they trail by as many as 16 they're down by five now let's go back to new york and gus johnson thanks for coming up on singular at the half we'll get you caught up on today's scores and highlights and seth davis will join me after this message and a word from your local station 38 33 north carolina up by five as we get set for the start of the second half and let's Break it down statistically for the first 20 minutes of the ballgame, Billy. 
Well, some of the things that certainly jump out to you, North Carolina was off to a tremendous start field goal shooting percentage. They made 13 of their first 18, but do you see how things have evened back out? Three-point field goal, Scott was uh, four for four in his first four that he took. You see that everything is leveled out since that time. Rebounding, North Carolina 22 to 15 edge, and that's because of that man right there, Sean May. But North Carolina found Wake Forest asleep early in the ball game, took advantage of it. Now Wake Forest starting to come back in the game. Skip Prosser is showing it. North Carolina what it's like to play against a big team. I'm North talking about big in terms of size. Skip Prosser really going to uh, big men inside more than he has uh, normally where he, he stays with those three guards in the lineup the way he started the second half. We've got Chris Paul, Teron Downey, and Justin Gray on the on the floor right now. And that wouldn't kick out of bounds. That was fortunate that Gray got a piece of that with the kick because Sean May was wide open. Now Raymond felt an inbound for Sean May. May sets the screen and uh, Felton with the pass, catch and shoot, McKinnon. Very tough shot, but he's going to fade away against his body. Very tough angle on that pass. You had Levy going towards the basket, the pass thrown straight ahead. Tough one to catch, particularly off the bat. Now Felton in his hands once again. Opening moment, second half, second meeting between these two. That's the three off the iron. There's Gray. Gray. Gray, Downey, back to Gray, jumper, yes. Great, so effective with those three guys pushing the ball up the floor, but Felton got exactly the shot he wants. The way Wake Forest started the game, not fighting over the screen outside, giving good open look. The margin is two. Wake Forest has never led in this ball game. There's Felton. Oh, clean strip. strip by Gray. What a strip on that play. Similar to the play we saw the other night that Sheldon Williams stripped Sean May on the way down. Terrific in-air reaction by Justin Gray. Williams on a big overplay. Now, one of the things that Roy Williams will be watching right here, Vernon, is will his players have legs in the second half? I mean, that was a draining game against Duke the other night. Both teams playing so hard. Either team obviously could have won that ball game right down to the wire. Sometimes your legs just get away from you. Shooting will be the first sign of it. That should be an intentional foul and a basket. Yes. Now, here we're going to talk about a two, shooting two, and getting the ball back out. This could be a six or even seven-point play for North Carolina. McCants got the basket, and he's been quiet in this ball game. The intentional foul called on Gray. So McCants made the basket for two. He'll shoot two, and North Carolina will get the ball out of bounds with a chance for two or maybe even three. One more. Can't say enough of what this fellow has done with the exception of the time we saw him against Kentucky. He has come up big, big in the Connecticut game with huge shots. Against Duke with big shots. Now that uh, outing against Kentucky was a five-point defeat for North Carolina. And Raymond uh, Rashad McCants in that game held four points on two of seven. Only time this year he's been a single digit. Here's May. He walked and got away with it. Jumper, yes. Oh, it's Felton. So it's a six-point play. Six-point play. Big opportunity for North Carolina there. Just as Blake Forrest got it down to two. Got down, he's probing. There's another great catch and release. He'll shoot three. Good come back to that North Carolina basketball. Yeah, good comeback by Gray right here. Felton steps back, gets off the jumper, gets the nice kind roll, and gets it. That's the third foul on Rashad McCants and Justin Gray, who, uh, as we said, is hitting 87% for the season, though he missed one of the first ten. Now shoot three. I tell you, I'm surprised that Roy Williams is leaving McCants in the game. A lot of time in this ball game. You, you know that he's worn down a little bit from what he put out in effort the other night, and you wouldn't want him to pick up the fourth here to not be able to use him down the stretch. So it might not be a bad time to try to steal a few minutes here and get him on the bench. Matter of fact, he keeps looking back over yeah, at the bench. Yeah, thinking he's coming out, exactly. and uh, he's not seeing anybody at the bench giving him any attention. All three. 
successfully negotiated for Justin Gray. Scott decides not to shoot. Off of May's hands on the floor. Felton, good job. Felton down and really took the track. Jawan Williams fouled by Eric Williams. Yeah, Felton is hurt here. What yes, happened he is. is, and there should have been a foul on that. Paul dove on top of Felton. Felton was on the ground. Should have been called a foul. Wasn't. Surprised that uh, Felton has gotten up. Watch it right here. Now, see, Felton's down. Now, watch this. That's a foul. There's no question about that. He wasn't even close to going after the ball. And after it all, Jawad Williams goes to the free throw line. Williams had solid games against Wake Forest last year. As a matter of fact, in this uh, this year, he played 50 minutes in that triple overtime game at 17 points, 12 rebounds. And, and not, not been for some injuries this year, Williams is off to an excellent season. Had a broken nose most recently. He's had a couple of concussions. That one kicked back outside. Levy controls it. North Carolina, by the way, perfect at the free throw line. They're 12 of 12. They fall. They collapse on Williams, and he does a nice job of going up and getting it. So what he's doing better with his footwork now is not banging into the defensive player. He's staying away until he feels some contact, and then with that strong upper body, elevates. Five-point difference again. Back outside. Melton. Jump stop. Good job by Paul. Great block. Oh, oh. Twelve on the shot clock. Camps trailed by Chris Paul. There's Scott to switch out. Jawan Williams left open for three. He still can't get it. Oh, what a timing! Beautiful timing by May. John May got it. Paul so quick fouled and will shoot. Boy, he put that ball behind his back at full speed. How about the timing on this one? Oh, it's just perfect. May goes up there in between two Deacon players. Beautiful tap in. But Paul taking that ball down the floor. He and Felton are fun to watch. Last year, we all saw T.J. Ford set the pace for Texas to the Final Four with those incredible full-court dribbling exhibitions. Paul and Felton can do it as well. And Chris Paul shoots one more. He's uh, five of five at the line today. And David Noel replaces Jawad Williams for North Carolina. So McCants continues to stay on the floor with three fouls. Yep. May. Jump hook. Short. Tip. Controlled by Noel. Loose ball out of bounds, North Carolina. With the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for over 30 years. You see a lot of guys going for the ball on the floor. It's a good sign any coach likes to see. No reaching. They're putting their bodies at risk. A chance guarded now by Tyrone Downey. There's the screen from May. Solid leaves McCants open for three. Again, Wake Forest breaking down on that solid screen, not fighting over the top very hard. And it's back to an eight-point game. Nice double down by North Carolina. Williams tries to go up and under. And there's another <laughs> fine defensive play by Felton. How about that ball? Wow. Middle behind the back in the lane. Blind pass. McCants in and out. Now Wake Forest will try to run. Levy should have given the ball up to a guard much earlier. Downey too strong. Paul tracks it down and got it. Now, North, Roy Williams may have to go time out here. His team is really starting to feel it. There's going to be a push by Scott on Levy. And just as we saw a big turnaround on that foul before on the camps, a deliberate foul, now we see one in the open court. But North Carolina very tired right now, and they're going to need a break. Well, it is a media timeout, so the clock is stopped. 15.37 to go.
Purdue down by one. Brandon McKnight drives, hits the baseline jump shot. They go up, but here come the Wolverines with time. Daniel Horton racing up the floor, down the lane. The runner is short. Courtney Sims grabs it and puts it in, and he comes up with his first career double-double. Michigan wins. Now let's go back to Vern and Billy. All right, Gus, big win for Tommy Amaker, obviously, in that very tight Big Ten this year. Well, it really is. Wisconsin, uh, Vern, looks like they're separating themselves, much as Duke is in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Wisconsin having an opportunity to win their third straight Big Ten championship. Quite an accomplishment and a very good basketball team. See that rebounding edge, 27-19. 13 offensive rebounds in this game for North Carolina. That was a big break for North Carolina in terms of that television timeout because they got a long rest there. Now they come back out and they go to the zone. They were starting to wear down a little bit. Another dive on the floor. Hell ball. It will be Wake Forest. Kyle Visser is back on the floor now. Had those uh, quality minutes in the first half. Plays with three fouls. Well, here you see Coach Prosser going to his big team. Visser and Williams and Levy out right. there. So uh, North Carolina counters by going zone because they're just two perimeter shooters in the game. And those two are uh, Chris Paul and Justin Gray. This is Gray. And Jack Emanuel with the quick hands almost knocked it away. Wow. I don't know if that was a good shot, and if you're Gray, you don't want to be on Manuel's side because he is a very good defender of a jump shot. In the corner, Jackie Manuel. And here's a jumper from David Noel. That's only the second three-pointer he has made this year. And really filling in the chance on that bench, so Roy Williams kind of save him from picking up any more fouls. Wake Forest trying to go inside with his big lineup against the zone. There's Bissard. Back outside, right side now. Chris Paul, quick adjustment, didn't get the roll. And North Carolina felt it, he'll hurry in. Ooh, Williams got a piece of that ball. North Carolina had numbers, the big man stayed up with it, Felton that time. Check out CBS Sports Line's projections of the 65 schools that could make up this year's NCAA tournament. Just click on NCAA Hoops at cbssportsline.com. And I think this is a very good move by Skip Prosser. He realizes that he's got to get more shooting power in the game if North Carolina is going to stay in the zone. It helps North Carolina a little bit in regard to the fatigue. And the great force going into the big lineup. Downey comes back in the ball game. 14 to 12 to go in this one. Here's Noel to hit the three. And May gets into a wrestling match with Eric Williams. And he gets the call. Yep. Second foul on Eric Williams. Wake Forest calls the timeout. The Prosser's team makes the move, and then North Carolina holds them off. Time call. Be right back. Weary North Carolina might be Thursday night against Duke. Rashad McCants hit a three-point basket with 15 seconds left in overtime to tie the game. But then Chris Duhon raced the length of the floor to score the go-ahead field goal with six seconds remaining. North Carolina one last chance. Melvin Scott's shot at the buzzer no good. Duke over North Carolina 83-81 in overtime. Uh, you were there, and uh, it was a heck of a game. Uh, they both laid it on the line in that particular game. I think both coaches are very proud of their team's effort without question. 54-45 in this one with 14.05 to go. Belton into David Noel's hands. Skip Prosser did what I expected at that timeout. He's gotten back to his smaller team so he can go against that zone defense. In and out. Chased down by Jamal Levy. And again, players on the floor. Now Visser will inbound for Purdue. Oklahoma State leading uh, Iowa State at the half by 30. And Providence nailed Syracuse today. The defending national champions suddenly falling on hard time. And they're having a hard time with their off on the offensive end of the floor. And here you see that zone really packing things back in. The Lake Forest ought to be much better suited for it right now. Going with Levy and Williams inside and surrounding that zone with three guards. Good help by Visser on May. Oh, what a nice pass. Noel finds May. He really did burn the good point there. 
But what happened, Williams took his eye off his man. I don't know why you would do that with May being the primary target going inside. 56-47, 13 minutes to go. You can see North Carolina staying in that zone, and they're, they're doing a good job not allowing Wake Forest to push that ball up the floor against it. Downing. This is skip pass. Chris Paul penetrates. Offense. He got by with a charge the last time on that particular move. A good job by May waiting on him. Here we see the basket I was talking about before. Now look at how Williams just lets his man go, pretends like May's no longer part of the game. He has got to recognize that he cannot give up on May, who knows how to cut to the basket. An excellent pass by Noel. Williams nowhere to be seen defensively. Now Felton, Noel, May, Jackie Manuel, and the shot McCants on the floor for the Tar Heels. That's for three. Short. Chase down. Grabbed by Wake Forest, Chris Paul. Good job by May to stop him. You don't want Paul to pick up steam when he's coming down the floor because he makes things happen off that dribble. Knocked out of bounds. It will be uh, Wake Forest to throw it in. Justin Gray. It's been a very good job by North Carolina to get back into this ball game. The big play being that intentional foul that gave him the six-point possession. At that point, Wake Forest had climbed back to within two. And Rashad McCann went up, made a basket, intentional foul, St. Louis two throws, and on the possession, they scored again. You see the nice counter by Roy Williams. Skip Crosser goes with his guards. Roy Williams gets out of the zone, goes back to man-to-man, -man where he's got good matchup. Five on the shot clock. Good job defensively by McCann, but how about the Justin Gray shot? Excellent step in by Gray. Those two were teammates in AAU basketball back in their high school days, so they certainly ought to know what they want to do. Noel passes on the three. Now cuts. McCants has it. Nice job defensively by Gray. Nice entry pass. Yes, sir. The tip. No. May from point blank range Wake Forest basketball. That was a terrific job by Visser, but May has had an outstanding game, just missed one right on the rim. Big miss there for North Carolina. 11 minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Time call, 56-49. College basketball coverage is sponsored by the new Chevrolets. 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. Coca-Cola, let's make it real. And by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood. Applebee's. Friend, one of the things you cannot do is relax. Now, we're going to watch. The ball is out here at the top. Williams gets caught. Instead of fighting over or coming in behind, he just relaxes. May cuts right to the basket, gets the ball down inside. See, Williams goes over the top, relaxes, totally out of position. Good play by May, and it's unfortunate for North Carolina. May missed that about six-inch attempt. I mean, we talk about three-footers. That was a six-inch shot. Didn't go. And here we go, North Carolina back to the zone again. Strickland in the ball game for Wake Forest. Ben Strickland, number 33, gets it to Visser, now Downey. He was working at the point. And Justin Gray. Visser tries to establish position low post. Nearing the 11-minute mark. 56-49, North Carolina. They have led the three out. Downey recognizes the clock, but doesn't put himself in position to shoot. Levy, muscles. Go! What a shot! Wow! And I told you about his extension. He plays like a seven-footer. It was amazing he was able to get that shot off. Levy in double figures with 11. The margin is five. There's Jackie Manuel with the ball in his hands. McCants pass deep, and Levy's going to call for it. Visser made the great block, but Levy did have the body contact. I think a fine call. Well, third round coverage of uh, the AT&T Pebble Beach coming up next. Phil Mickelson has moved into a tie with Luke Donald. Mickelson playing the eighth hole at Pebble Beach, and Luke Donald just teeing off. Two tied at nine. Third round coverage coming up next. That was the fourth foul on Levy, and uh, Vitas Danilus is going to come on and take his place. Danilus with a really 
effective six minutes in the first half. He really did. He had some great rebounding situations and defensive situations early. Didn't put up numbers scoring-wise. Very effective on the defensive end. Jack Emanuel back to the free throw line. Mm -hmm. This is always an experience when Emanuel goes to the free throw line. Yep. The rotation in the ball was a little weird. Sean Mays going to the line as Danilus gets called for the foul. Now, Justin Gray, what kind of a day has he had? Well, you know he's going to bury some shots. He's an excellent secondary ball handler. Sometimes can pick up and play the point when Paul's out of the game, as can Downey. And boy, this is another big turnaround for North Carolina. Mandel, who is not a good free throw shooter, you have to anticipate that he's going to miss more than he's going to make on that line. And Sean May able to get the rebound. And Dan Luce comes out. Well, Ross are very annoyed. And North Carolina gets another recovery off of this foul. That is only, ah, there's a rifle. Wow. What a pass. And we're talking about two huge possessions for North Carolina. One on the intentional foul, and that one on missed free throws that are top back. Sean May misses. That's only the second free throw miss for the day. And uh, they came back to back. Moves it back to a nine-point lead. Gray puts it on the floor. And uh, is fouled. How about this... Uh, Wrong pass just a moment ago. Great recognition on the inside. Williams and Visser confused as to who had May. Both of them going outside and never leaving the painted area if you're a big man until you locate what men are in there. Break down mentally for Wake Forest. Jack Emanuel picks up his fourth. He sits. Sean May with a double-double now. 12 points and 10 rebounds. He averages 10 rebounds per game. That one not good. This has got the ball alive for his teammates. Eric Williams can't can it. And here's the outlet pass to McCants. May running the floor. Quick hands at this ball. For Wake Forest. Timeout is called. Oh, a timeout before Gray goes out of bounds with the ball. Roy Williams cannot believe it. It was ruled that time was called. We'll be right back. Defeated teams stand ahead of them. It's been quite some time since we've had that undefeated season. It always tantalizes us. Well, number 42 in uh, Carolina Tar Heel Blue has a, a father who remembers that. And yeah, his dad was part of that Indiana team in 76. Gray, no. Visser, out of bounds. Carolina ball. Dan Luce comes back after a little tongue lashing about not blocking out on that free throw situation. Williams sits down. That's Felton and Noel on the floor along with May, Scott, and McCants for North Carolina. And a big rebounding edge for the Tar Heels now. 34-23. Many of them offensive. Scott screen from Noel. Freezing. In and out. May gets called for the foul. That's his second. St. Joseph's leading by 11 early going, and then UConn up by seven just before halftime. How about this battle? South Carolina, Kentucky. I'll tell you that uh, Dave Odom team, another one of those clubs under the radar, but uh, they have played extremely well. Dave Odom, of course, his decision to go to South Carolina, open up the spot here. And Skip Rosser came here after having served so capably at Xavier. There's Dan Luce again, and he's fouled. Let's see if it's called. This goes out of bounds. Paul wanted to push on the jump shot. Now everybody going after these officials. They yeah. just need to play the game a little bit. The game's been fairly well officiated. Downey is going to make a reappearance and replace... Strickland. Now let's see if North Carolina, they will stay zone on the out-of-bounds situation, but let's see if they go back to man-to-man -to -man with Blake Forrest coming out there with the guard. Fisher gets the inbound pass. Eight and a half to go. Man-to-man -man now, they're playing the guards heavy. This is Scott out on down. Levy's going to come back in with four fouls to Blake Forrest. Dan 
Downey, bounce pass, and Danilus is going to go to the line. Did a nice job of getting Noel up in the air. Excellent pump fake on his part, being very patient inside. Someday, tune in for music's biggest night, the Grammy Awards. Don't miss the surprise opening performances you can see, can't see anywhere else. And an all-star tribute to the Beatles, the Grammys, Sunday right here on CBS, America's most watched network. One more, Annalise, who had been, uh, again, prior to this injury, you got to just wipe this year out in terms of what his production has been, but an excellent free throw shooter in the past. He shoots one more, young man who came from Lithuania, high school in Indianapolis. Now the second team, all ACC pick a year ago. And he, was the, he was the third leading free throw shooter in the league last year at 79%. Eight-point game nearing the eight-minute mark. North Carolina spread their offense out a little different set. And Gray with a foul way away from the back. That's the seventh That's team foul. One, That's his third, seventh team foul. Third foul on Justin Gray, so he gets a little... Uh, he's getting a lecture there that why are we committing a foul? Not much time on the shot clock. Way away from the basket, putting Scott on the line. Scott you would assume would be a much better free throw shooter percentage-wise than he is. But a great stroke from three should be one of those 80-plus percent free throw shooters. And he's 65 percent. He does use all of the rim for that one. And uh, among the reasons North Carolina enjoys this edge, big rebounding edge offensively, and they are 15 of 17 at the free throw line. Because they've been able to pace this game, Lake Forest, who made an excellent comeback at the end of the first half by pushing the ball up the floor. North Carolina has done a good job taking that away from Lake Forest's offense. 10-point margin again. Largest lead of the ball game midway through the first half was 16 points for North Carolina. Uh, the Beacons cut it to five at the half. They were within two when that huge play... Well, he's alluded to the uh, intentional foul on McCants in a mate basket. And he turned things back to uh, his gray. Well, McCants had to go out after Gray knowing what a good shooter he is. And nice pump fake there. 15 points for Justin Gray. But you don't want to give up the three-point shots to a player. Noel. May, and I bet Dan Luce is going to pick up another foul. 62-54 here. Third round coverage of the at and Pebble Beach will uh, follow us and Phil Mickelson has now birdied the eighth hole and moved into a uh, one-shot lead over Luke Donald, Scott McCarron. Tiny guy who hits it nine miles, as most of them do these days. Phil Mickelson off to a tremendous start this year. He talked about his conditioning program in the offseason. Big basketball fan, but he is obviously focusing in on putting that ball right now. You know, I watched him last week in Phoenix, and he, you can tell how much weight he's got. Yeah, he really. And here's May gets two at the line. North Carolina doing a tremendous job on the foul line today. And they're getting there often. Time is called. Ten-point game. Earlier this week, they learned that their son, Captain Matthew Holliday, is uh, on his way home from almost a year's service in Iraq. Got the call Thursday right before the game with Duke, right? Yep, didn't tell any of the players uh, about it because he didn't want to take away their focus in the game. A great story. He's back in Italy at his base, and he has never seen an NCAA tournament game, his father said. And he hopes that if North Carolina can get there, that this year he'll be able to see his first one. You know how happy they are to have their son back. Matter of fact, he flew into Iraq last year during the NCAA tournament when we were brought down. Matthew, uh, a captain in the Army, graduate of the United States Military Academy of West Point. There's Gray with another excellent pump wall to get a good look. Well, that is tremendous technique right there. 16 points for Justin Gray, seven point game. Manual on a nice play and how is May. You know, somebody at Wake Forest ought to understand this guy is an outstanding player. <laughs> he did not play in either game against Wake Forest last year because of those injuries. Had the broken foot. Yep. And he is making his presence felt here, particularly down the stretch. And this zone is helping North Carolina from a standpoint of not getting any further fatigue. Alley. Oh. Levy from Chris Paul. And 
Did Skip Prosser call that timeout, or was that yes, timeout yes. was forced? Kind of surprising there. Levy now six of seven, 13 points in the ball game. Time call, Blake Forrest. Remaining Wake one. Yeah, Bird, I'm really kind of surprised that Wake Forest called a timeout there to get themselves down to just one timeout left. This is the kind of game that you can see potentially going to the wire. You'd like to save a man. I think it's a good move by Wake to pick up full court, try to set tempo on this game. Felton foul by Chris Paul, and Felton down hard. I don't know Not if there was any the contact yeah. made there. That was a pretty clever play by Paul. Uh, he didn't cut under him to hurt him. So watch this right here. I don't know if there was any contact whatsoever that committed that foul. But if you're going to press North Carolina, what you've got to do is really be aware that Felton will take it coast to coast on you. And again, free throw shooting really paying off. He's perfect so far. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game offensive rebounds. UNC has doubled up Wake Forest at complete game stats at cbsportsline.com. Now you're talking about doubling up the rebounding situation against a team that last year was the number one rebounding team in the country. Only guy off of that squad, Josh Howard, that really was a factor there. Had his jersey retired here a week or so ago. There's Downing. Nice pass. Oh, and changed hands in it. Yes. Or it would have been blocked by May. Second big play inside by Levy. Crowd getting into it for about the first time today. May feeling room. Fakes one way, comes back. Levy clears it. The margin right now is seven with 5.32 to go. No guards come to take that ball away from him. Downey, they gave him the shot. There's those long arms of Levy again. On the baseline. Pump up. No good. Levy again. And again, this time he gets fouled. He probably was fouled before that, but terrific sequence by Levy. Well, third round coverage coming up. We continue to keep you uh, aware of what's going on. Duke, Don, Luke Donald has uh, birdied his second hole of the day, and we have a tie. Mickelson and Donald with two tied, two back. You know, Bird, I wonder if Lanny, our black partner out there, will talk at all in here at Pebble Beach ah. yeah, during this weekend. Maybe he'll tell us about that a little Perhaps bit. we can induce him to share the story. Oh, that's right. They're getting ready for the broadcast now. Jim Nance and Lanny at 18. and The rest of our golf crew, including the irrepressible ones, Mr. Faherty and Mr. McCord. Five minutes to go. Big defensive sequence right here for Wake Forest. They've got the crowd back into the ball game. They've got it to seven. Felton. Five on the shot clock. Outside, oh, Daniel. Oh, boy, they got the ball to the man. And again, another offensive rebound for North Carolina. Manuel is the guy you wouldn't want shooting, but it worked out perfectly. Time called North Carolina. And Roy Williams has been able to rest McCants, who now will come in for Manuel. 17 offensive rebounds, North Carolina. Joel Coliseum, campus Winston-Salem, Wake Forest, trailing UNC 68-61. Rashad McCants will throw it in. And does so to Raymond Felton. That offensive rebound was huge. Wake Forest and Bateson, good stop. Now Noel. Get the ball in the hands of the guy you want it to go down the wire with. Belton kicks it back outside. There's the attempted entry pass. You know it was? Levy with those long arms again blocking that pass. May on Chris Paul. Wow. Gray, no. Noel goes up, loose ball, Bissell. A jumper from Gray, yes. Bissell and Levy have both done a terrific job in this stretch. Hurry oh, to the other God. end. What a pass. 
But again, the tempo of this game, even though there's not a lot of time left, favoring Wake Forest, you're going to get a running situation. Can you imagine how effective Felton would be if there was some depth on this team and his ability to push the ball? Ball goes out of bounds, big turnover. Time called with 3.35 remaining. A six-point game. Coming up next on CBS, they're midway through. Round number three, Phil Mickelson, Luke Donald at the top of the leaderboard currently. Avern, one of your old broadcast partners, Billy Cunningham, can remember coming in to play in Winston-Salem. It, it was actually a game that changed the history of the North Carolina basketball. Wake Forest beat North Carolina here, and when they got back on the bus to North Carolina in 1964 after losing to Wake Forest, Cunningham was on the bus. Some students had decided to hang Dean Smith and effigy. Fortunately, Cunningham and his teammates and the faculty and representatives at North Carolina said, no, I think we'll let this guy hang around a little bit, see if he can coach a team, all right? <laughs> so, uh, your old broadcast partner, one of those that uh, changed the history in many ways. The kangaroo kid. That's right. One of the great ones at North Carolina. Here's Chris Paul, left side. Paul should have been ready to shoot the jump around that pass out from Drake. Downing, Levy, nice dish to Visser. Can he do it as a... Oh, oh on Levy. the rim, Levy. And he is fouled. Ooh, I thought that's pretty good block by Noel inside, but Levy making his presence felt again. Tonight on CBS, the pressure is on as the competition heats up. Arsenio Hall hosts an all-new Star Search, followed by Hack and Saturday's number one drama, The District. It's all here tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. Levy has had a very effective day. One of two from the free throw line. And it's a five-point game again. Only a 60% free throw shooter. But those long arms have got him the ball off and down on the offensive end here. Looks good. They're going to try to pick up full court. Pink Felton. See, Levy's trying to get the ball out of Felton's hands, but it doesn't work. Now Chris Paul's got Felton. This matchup of stellar point guards. Think the chance. And the jumper. Short. Rebound. Chris Paul. No numbers, but that won't prohibit him from taking it all the way. Levy! Wow! Levy! Paul had nowhere to go. Levy bailed him out. Now this is the way the crowd needed to start this game if you're playing on your home court. For the second time in the second half, it's a two-point game. I still think you want to go, oh, Felton and the chance ball was tipped. Take another look at the follow by Jamal Levy. Now this is Paul goes down, nowhere to go. Probably was fouled on the play, but Levy just followed it up perfectly. Inbounds, 2.15 remaining. 14 on the shot clock. I still think Felton and the camps is the answer if you're North Carolina here. You don't want to foul. Jumper, Felton, no! And a chance for Wake Forest to get his first lead in the ballgame. This is Jerome Downey. He'll give it to Chris Paul. 1.49 to go. Wake Forest trailed by 16 in the first half. They've been within two twice in this half. There's a screen set by Visser. Pick and roll. Downey, shot clock at 11. Nobody coming to the ball. Here's Levy. He's only missed once tonight. He's been the bailout man in this half. Two on the shot clock. Visser, no! That was not a good possession. The ball not in the hands of the guard for the last eight seconds. Metal turnover there. Delton looks over. Roy Williams gets the play. Now comes back outside. One minute. North Carolina was up by 24 against Florida State. He lost that game in overtime, so... They don't want to be thinking. Here's Felton taking another jumper and buries this one from three. Terrific shot. Felton, five-point game. Felton has 17 points. See, now that timeout that Wake Forest would like to have, they no longer have, and they've got to get moving. 
and they got they don't have to go for three but they got to use some clock quickly here there's the curl there's justin gray penetrates kicks it outside downey paul gray for three no offensive board paul up in and now they use their last timeout 28.1 left now, Felton was left alone and you'd say that take the chances from that far out but he buried it we'll go out west as soon as this one's in the history book 73 70 28.1 and no timeouts remaining remember the one I talked about Vern about three minutes or so ago and Wake Forest got themselves in a position I thought that was not a good time to use one because you want to save them right here when you're really going to need them. Now, when you start looking at North Carolina's team on the floor, Noel is in the ball game. He is the poorest free throw shooter. Scott, the second poorest free throw shooter. I think if you cannot afford to let much time go off this clock at all, you want to have that uh, an opportunity to have that ball in your hands with at least 10 seconds to go. So think Noel and think Scott if you're going to foul anybody. I don't think you foul right away. May has trouble getting it in. He gets it in the hands of Felton. He's got a breakaway. Underneath, layup. Tremendous job by Felton. Melvin Scott gets it for two. 19 seconds to go. Off the rim. And Felton again. Felton again. Oh, here's the punctuation point. Tremendous win on the road for Roy Williams, who's got this incredible six-day stretch. Now finds himself going to Georgia Tech on the road. That one good by Paul. But no timeouts. No outs, timeouts. And North Carolina gets two more. Rashad McCants. This is only the third road victory in ACC play for North Carolina in the last 22 games. Now Wake Forest started this ball game, as did their crowd, very quiet and kind of asleep, but North Carolina took advantage of it. Stole one on the road. Chevrolet, most valuable players in the game. John May and Jamal Levy, 18 points and 19 respectively. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Third round coverage, AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. That's next. This was a good one at Lawrence Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, the final. 79-73 North Carolina. For Billy Packer, I'm Vern Lundquist. This is a presentation of CBS, home of the NCAA Men's Championship. <laughs>